my whole thing is that although this may seem counterintuitive, at the end of the day, you have to be okay with everybody rejecting you. And one of the ways... I think one of the only ways that you can truly be okay with people rejecting you is by going out there and getting rejected. And you hear this a lot in sales courses or sales training. I've done sales training as well. They'll tell you, just get rejected. If you get 10 no's, you know you're one step closer to a yes. So collect those no's, collect those rejections because that's one step closer to a yes from somebody. And you don't need everybody to tell you yes. As a matter of fact, it's not an expectation for people to tell you yes. It's an expectation that people will tell you no. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive, but the person who is the most confident in the room they're not thinking about being the most confident in the room. The person who's most charismatic, they're not thinking about being the most charismatic person in the room either. And it's not because, oh, it's because they're natural and that's why. It's precisely the fact that they have the mindset of, well, it's okay if I fail. And then you're happy when people tell you yes. So it's an expectation of failure. And then when you don't fail, you're like, oof. Oh, look at me. And that's what makes you confident. It's not the fact that you don't ever make a mistake or you don't fail. It's the fact that you expect yourself to fail because failing is the only way you'll learn. And if you're a lifetime learner like me and you like personal development like me, you'll you'll have to fail. That's the only way you can learn. At the core of social anxiety, and I'll speak for myself, it was really just that, oh, I wanted to say the perfect thing. I didn't want to appear stupid. And it's the reason why I think the Think Fast, Talk Smart video, people click on it a lot. It's purely because of the title. Yeah, I want to be able to think fast and talk smart because what you're afraid of and what a lot of people, most people are afraid of is to appear like a slow thinker and to appear like you're dumb. But it's a fear and that fear in of itself makes you actually trip up over your words, makes you actually use a lot more filler words because you're trying to fill up that time because you're so nervous and anxious. Or if you have ADHD like Mia, you tend to want to keep going, keep going, Going because there's so many thought bubbles in your head that you're just trying to get it all out and hopefully the other person will catch what you're throwing out there <laughs> but you know what it's not their job to catch what you're throwing out it's you the person who's communicating it's your job to make sure that's cohesive enough for whoever the recipient is because you're not going to talk to a five-year-old the same way you're going to talk to your friend the same way you're going to talk to your co-worker the same way you're going to talk to your boss not that long learning curve uh, eventually goes less and less failure, but you still can't be afraid to fail. That's the whole point. You can't be afraid to look stupid by asking a question. Hey, what does that mean? If you ever end up taking an in-person public speaking course, the first thing that they'll tell you is to not concentrate on yourself. Concentrate on what the purpose of what you're trying to say. Concentrate on the audience and connecting with them. Concentrate on anything else other than yourself. But when you're practicing, you actually do want to concentrate on yourself. When you're practicing, you want to concentrate on how you're saying it, what your tonality is, how you're vocalizing it, right? So concentrate on all those things when you're in practice by yourself, when it's not the spotlight on you. So the same concept applies when you're talking about communication, charisma, confidence, is that I would record myself, and this is something that I've said in other videos too, just like I'm recording myself here on camera, I would record myself on camera, talk, practice talking, practice telling a story to a friend, practice telling them, convincing them of, hey, this is why we should see this movie or, or this is why we should go to this location on our next vacation, whatever it is, convince them of something and record yourself. Look at how, look at how you do and then critique yourself. But do this in private. When you're out there and actually communicating, actually doing a presentation, then that's when you focus on everything that is external from you, not internally. And, and if anything, they should feel uncomfortable because you're really looking at them. You're really observing them. You're really trying to figure out what they're about. And this is what they teach you in any type of public speaking course, on stage public speaking course, and any type of sales course. 
this is all they teach you is that you practice in private on all the technique works you need to do in terms of communication. And then when you go out there and actually communicate with people, they tell you to switch your mindset into connecting with the other person, observing the other person. So this is the same thing with an audience or one on one with a person or in a group setting. You're really trying to externalize your experience rather than internalize. So that's the key difference when we're talking about all of these tips I talk about on the channel every once in a while I'll see a comment that says well we can't be thinking about that all the time absolutely not you're, you're correct you cannot be thinking about your verbal fluency you cannot be thinking about all the filler words that you're using you cannot be thinking about all these other things because that's going to trip you up in of itself so what do you do? You do practice that absolutely in private by yourself talking to a camera and then when you go out there you drop it completely drop it and then hopefully you practice enough that it's in your muscle memory here 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 and then you go with that because that's what's going to make you better and better each and every time ironically when you get used to messing up and failing in private then the weight and the heaviness of that being catastrophic kind of goes out the window but usually the people who don't practice and get a more social anxiety they don't necessarily practice in a person they don't look in the mirror let's say and do a mirror exercise of talking to them in the mirror and looking at them and see how they talk how, how they move their fingers and legs and how they project their voice record themselves on camera and then watch themselves like all of those little things that I used to do all the time it adds up over the course of days weeks, months, and especially years, you're going to get better, just like with any other skill. You're going to get better. And then the last times you're gonna fail in certain things until you try something new and different. <laughs> and you put in a new technique into your communication process or you know things like that. So the irony is that if you're not afraid to look stupid, if you're not afraid to fumble over your words, if you're not afraid to use a few filler words because it's okay to use a few filler words, it's not the devil, right? If you're okay with looking dumb or not saying the right thing at the right time all the time getting stuck on your words if you're okay in the heart of hearts of that because you know you're a student of life and a student of communication and the student of connection with other people a student of presentation Nobody, nobody can, nobody can hit you. That being said, if you want to practice some techniques specifically, uh, look through my channel. I have a lot of techniques and tips and tricks that you can implement. So go ahead and do that. And until the next video, subscribe, hit the notification button, and I'll see you on the next video.